Cameron got grey-listed last June 23 by the Financial Action Task Force, the watchdog of global money laundering and terrorist financing. In its latest update, the intergovernmental body added Cameron, along with Croatia and Vietnam, to the list of countries to be monitored closely when it comes to these two crimes. Now, the decision to include Cameron in the grey list comes amid the ongoing separatist conflict in its anglophone regions where militias backed by a part of the diaspora have been linked to providing financial support to the separatists. Now, the recent update from FATF highlights the deficiencies in this country's regimes to counter these crimes. So, joining me for this conversation, I have Esther Ben Gudici, Director of Programs Transnational Alliance to Combat Illicit Trade from Paris, France. Thank you so much, Esther Ben, for joining us once again on the show. No, thank you. Good morning to you and to your audience. This is very important. Of course, I'm going to tackle this from the illicit trade perspective and organized crime. Definitely. Now, Cameron has just been really said by FATF. Was it something that you saw coming? And what does this mean for the country? Okay, yeah. I can provide you with some information that we had in the past. I'm not going to say that we saw this coming because it's easy to talk when the news are outside there. So I'm not going to preach that. But what I'm going to say is that we noted that Cameroon is a country, uh, so of course, we know grappling with poverty. Uh, though the country is growing at a 4% rate. We know that after COVID, it was quite difficult. There is an inflation in the country, which is between 6 8%, depending on, on the way that it's measured. There are shortages uh, in key products and also uh, difficult to get to, that, to those ones by people who need them the most, like it can be red, wheat, I mean, basic products. And this can be explained in part due to the geopolitical situation, the war. Now, if we're talking specifically about illicit trade and how this had an impact on the great listing of Cameroon by the FATF, I can tell you that in the year 2019, um, we conducted, we have the, the data from some studies, and we saw that there were very severe problems in terms of illicit trade of products subject to excise. And here I'm talking about tobacco, alcohol, and also we have a study done in relation to OTC pharmaceuticals. The estimations at the time were for alcohol around 24% that was illegal, 30% 30% in tobacco, 30% in OTC pharma, represented overall like 56 million US dollars loss in terms of tax income from the country. Of course, the estimations, they are very difficult to do in terms of illicit trade, as we always say, but this gives us a picture. And what we also saw was the drivers behind illicit trade in Cameroon. We could see that there was mainly the, the economic problem that I already mentioned, there is a low average. Also that there was a high potential for criminals to get profit from illicit trade with pretty much no risks. We saw also that there is lack of awareness. We had seen also that there were insufficient controls in the border and a problem with corruption, and of course, some weaknesses in the country's institutions. Now, this is a perspective from illicit trade. This is what we had seen. And you asked me if we foresaw that the great lifting was going to happen. Well, how do I correlate this to the FATF? If we go to the report of the FATF and we see what were the key recommendations that they were not duly followed by Cameroon and that they were partially com partially compliant or non-compliant at all. We see that there is a lack of national cooperation. We see that there is a problem with implementing the risk, assessing risk and applying risk-based approach by Cameroon in relation to financial crimes. And this is pretty much what I just said in relation to illicit trade. I mean, there was a lack of awareness. What the FATF said is that the risk-based approach that the country needs to implement to fight organized crime, to fight money laundering, to fight financial flows, illicit financial flows and countering terrorism, is a problem of awareness of the key stakeholders in the country. And here I'm talking about financial institutions, I'm talking financial, financial intelligence units. So this whole combo of things that I'm mentioning, we could say today with mandate news, as we say, that it's something that could be foresaw, but 
I mean, I think that we are going to keep on talking about this. I think that there is light at the end of the tunnel because there are things that Cameroon can do very fast to improve its prospects. You also asked me in your you also asked me in the first question what this means for the country. Well, green gray listed, it's a big problem in terms of reputation for the country, but most importantly, it's a problem in terms of receiving investment. In countries that are gray listed, gray listed are less prone to receiving investment institutions in the country to, uh, for instance, do transactions overseas. And that's something that really undermines the economic prospects of a country. There is an estimation that is done by the International Monetary Fund that says that in average, a country that is great listed losses 7.6% of its capital inflow after this situation happens. So these are all the whole things that happen with Cameroon, and we believe that tackling illicit trade would be an excellent way to start getting out of this gray list. All right. Now, uh, during the country's last peer review, it received 13 partially compliant ratings for money laundering and eight non-compliant ratings for terrorist financing, uh, necessitating its inclusion on the FATF grid list. So uh, how did this actually happen? Is it that these government institutions and the likes and agencies actually know about this list? Because you talked about the fact that there's the lack of awareness on their part. Uh, is it, so is it that they know about these things and just look away? Because we are aware that uh, Cameroon is doing as much as possible to work with um, FATF to see how it can uh, actively bring to an end these um, allegations that has been leveled against it. But then does it seem as though there's um, some sort of deliberation, uh, a deliberate attempt not to address these issues or is it that the financial institutions are not also optimal in monitoring such situations? Or the government past titles are not doing as much as um, nipping this kind of um, act or atrocious act in the bud? Okay, to answer your question, I'm going to tell you first the facts, which is what happened in the report, trying to be as pedagogic and understandable as possible. And then I'm going to give you my personal opinion because, well, why this happened, it's a little bit of personal opinion after uh, crunching with the data and what happened. You rightly mentioned there are 13 um, indicators out of the 40 recommendations of the FATF that were rated as partially compliant. This means that there are moderate shortcomings in the country for implementing this. And the first one among the 13, I'm going to mention the ones that I think that they are more important in relation to illicit trade is the, the first one, the lack of awareness in the sense that there is not a risk-based approach, which means that countries and the competent authorities and the banks assess and understand the money laundering and terrorist financing implications in the country, the country what it's exposed to. This is a technical recommendation of FATF and it's partially compliant by Cameroon. Then there is a problem with national cooperation and coordination. There is no mechanism for anti-money laundering. And also in relation to illicit trade, this is partially compliant by Cameroon. There is a problem with the confiscation and provisional measure, confiscation of crime proceeds. But this is a problem that all countries are grappling with. There is also a problem with political exposed persons. This is a requirement. There is, it's not fully implemented. There are problems with the law. There is also a uh, partially compliant indicator in relation to the higher risk countries. And this is also important for illicit trade because it means that there is no intelligence with neighboring countries from where illicit flows may come. And this is something that needs to be taken care of according to the regulations and to the recommendations of the FATF. There are also problems with the monetary financial institutions, cash couriers, I mean, and there are many others. And then there are other recommendations that they are non-compliant, that they were rated as non-compliant by the FATF, which means that there are major shortcomings. And these are mostly related to the targeted sanctions in relation to terrorism and to the prevention of proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. There is also a problem with the non-regulation of non-profit organizations that on many occasions they are using for money laundering purposes, and that's why it needs to be taken care of. And there is also a problem with the statistics of the country and the transparency in relation to owners of legal persons. Now, the good news opinion in relation to Cameroon is that many of these uh, indicators 
do not relate implementation of these standards, but to a step that is a little bit before, meaning that there is a problem with the legislation that needs to be updated. And I think it's a good news because it's something that can be done uh, not quickly necessarily, but when it's done, the system becomes more robust and that improves a lot the indicator. Now, I'm not going to avoid your first question that was, why do I think that this happened? Well, I don't believe that there is a, a negative will from the government of the political power. I believe that there are many problems with which Cameroon is grappling. The borders they are extremely difficult. It's a difficult region. It's a region that is affected by terrorism of different ways. It's a region where there are many illicit financial flows, including, including illicit trade, tobacco, it's crazy, pharmaceuticals. It's something that is really compounding all these problems. And there are many priorities that the country needs to take care of. This okay. is why this thing happens. And this is why we come with traces, because with traces do the lead that it's very important to tackle illicit trade to solve this problem. All right. Now, finally, uh, Mr. Ban, we see that um, FATF's International Cooperation Review Group has uh, placed Cameroon under closer surveillance because, of course, um, this latest development. And after its preliminary assessment, it will submit uh, Cameroon to an action plan. So I'd like you to just, in about a minute, take us through what this action plan will be in tandem with what Cameroon's fate would also be by the time this um, action plan is rolled out. Yes, that's another good news that there is an action plan. This means, this, uh, and it's in the gray list, not the black list, meaning that the country will engage with FATF to solve this problem. The first point of the action plan, it's very broad. It says that the country will align to all the recommendations on anti money laundering. So, meaning everything that I mentioned beca before. But it makes particularly emphasis, and from an illicit trade perspective, uh, as an expert from trade, it, I think that there is the enhancing the risk based supervision of banks and implementing an effective based, risk based supervision. This means that it's going to be more difficult for criminals to launder the proceeds of crime. There is also a very important action plan in relation to cooperation with neighboring countries and enabling mutual legal assistance. This means that the justice systems are going to help each other to investigate serious crimes. And we try to explain to the countries and to socialize that illicit trade is intrinsically related to very egregious forms of criminality, not only money laundering, not only organized crime, but also trafficking in human beings okay. or adulteration of medicines. I think that these are the, more, the, 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 the most important uh, takeaways from my perspective. All right. Thank you so much, Esteban, for joining us. Our pleasure. All right. Now, uh, Cameroon's reputation is at stake here with allegations hanging over its neck and could tarnish its image if that continues, making it harder for the government to attract foreign aid and investment into the country. So it's very important that all stakeholders in the country step up efforts to address the allegations leveled against it. Because I tell you, Cameroon will not want to step from the gray list into FATF's blacklist that could bring about dire consequences for the country and its economy. All right, that's the end of Business Edge for today. And of course, for this week, uh, you can follow us on social media. We are at New Central TV. You can download our mobile app on App Store and Play Store and head onto our website, www.newcentral.africa. My name is Lekon on Mobanjo. Next week, uh, we will be bringing you other um, several discussions as related to Africa's business on the show, 11 a.m. West African time, right here on uh, New Central Television. Do enjoy your weekend. Mm -hmm.